three, two, one. Oh yeah! So welcome to Smack Up. Welcome to Smack Up, boys. We back on Jack Up. Smack Up. Who the fuck is jacked up for a big Smack Up? Whoa! You're jacking me off right now, aren't you? Maybe. You're cranking my hog, bro. I got so much Tordal running through my penis right now. What you gonna do when they come for you? (laughs) We're in Kansas, Missouri, guys. Home of the the Chiefs. Home of Patrick Mahomes. No, no, no. We're in the Royal City, baby. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. We're here in this city. Who the fuck is Patrick Mahomes? I will reference sports team. Oh, um, uh, MJF? Buddy. Oh, yeah. Maxwell Jacob Fuckman. That man's not wrestling yet. He's he's a Kojima character. All I know is Trent Green from Kansas City Maxwell Jacob Fuckman. He does the fucking. How'd you guys feel about this big promo? This big promo? Oh, yeah, yeah. Randy Orton comes out and he says, Ray, I'm not here yet because it was Kurt Angle and he's bald. <laughs> Come on, Ty. Yeah, Come on, Randy Ty. Randy Orton dude. comes out here and he looks at Ray and he says, So true. And then, then Ray Mysterio says, Kurt, I think you don't have a lot of hair tonight. And Kurt said, what do you mean by that? Ray, I don't want to fight you. And Ray's like, is it because you want to fight Orton? And Kurt's like, yeah, I want to fight Orton. And Ray's like, okay. You think I'm why not don't we good beat enough, up, bro? Why don't we beat up Orton tonight? And Orton comes out and goes, hey, hey, take it easy, tough guy. He said, I've taken on more than two men at the same time. But I'm not going to do that tonight. And then Kurt goes, yeah! This episode fucking sucks. This episode does not suck. You say it every I meant, fucking episode. No, I'm talking about the this smack episode up. is <laughs> good. Mean, no, hey, no, hey, hey, hey. Smackdown is good. This smack, is good. This whole... smack <laughs> up is good. <laughs> Guys, Naram Pete, I think we have a defector here. I think Bros. we have Raw Down Ty among uh, us. Alright, guys. Alright, hold up. Let me. I need you to morph. I need, I need you to. I'm gonna kill I need you guy. to walk out of the room and walk back in with changed man real quick. Fuckers, it's smack up Ty here. All right, I, I kicked that little shit out. This SmackDown yeah, was right. amazing. Smack up, raw right, down. Let's not go. Let's not go that far. What? Come on now. Hey, come on. Uh, let's throw a little let's, uh, let's, uh, let's be a little. Yeah. Let's huh? be a little. We need to have the Wanderers. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get we'll get a little loud later. Okay. Fair enough. So what, what do we start off with? Rey Mysterio. Uh, so... He comes out, calls out Orton, but then Angle's coming out instead. Angle says, I want Orton. And then, yeah, whatever. He said, he basically is like, I want to fucking kill Randy Orton tonight just so I can kill him again at WrestleMania. And then Orton comes out. And then he's just like, hey, hello, ladies. And so we have Randy Orton calling both of them ladies or something. Val Venus. Yeah, they're yeah, both ladies. not to get their panties on a twist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Some panties. Yeah, Randy wearing... Orton's he's already got his sights set on Chicago for the big time. He's got That's his sights set. Cool. He's got his sights set on women's underwear right now. Yeah, actually. Oh, so true. Yep. But then that that got that got Ray and Angle all up in a tizzy over who's gonna get to fight who tonight, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, that makes Teddy Long come out, and he says, you know. He's like, what Ray said about, or what Randy said, I should say, about that handicap match sounds pretty good. He's like, maybe we'll do that. Yeah, and then Randy's Randy, like, oh, uh, Teddy, I hate you. Yeah, he says, he told, he specifically says uh, that Teddy's giving Ray another favor like he did when he put Ray in the main event. Yeah. And then Kurt says, it's not about Ray, it's about him and Randy. And Ray's yeah. like, well, you don't think I can beat you? Angle passively kind of agrees, right? It's like a, it's a tacit agreement. I can beat anybody, he says. I can beat anybody. Yeah. Not just he you. says, he does say Ray would be the better opponent. Yeah. Yep. Ray, but it, doesn't outright say that yeah. he believes Ray could beat him. Which, yeah. uh, to be fucking, honest, if I'm Kurt Angle, I believe nobody can beat me either. Randy yeah. also says that he is getting some prejudice from Teddy. Oh. 
Yeah. It's, it's, it's about yeah. time somebody fucking had some prejudice towards John <laughs> Doran. No, finally there's someone brave <laughs> enough to speak out against Teddy Teddy Long. <laughs> finally. Teddy, Teddy, but, Teddy. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, hey, I got Teddy on the phone right now. It's not as if no, hold on. it's not as if we have Booker T getting shit on for faking an injury every No, week. no, no, no. I got Teddy on the phone right now. Teddy, how'd you feel about Randy Orton? Remove this cracker from my That's so true. Oh yeah, no. Fair enough. He, yeah, not he fair did enough. exactly that. Not fair enough, because because uh, all the security comes out and bullies Randy out of the ring. Yep. He was yeah, escorted yeah. out of the arena. Yeah, they went. Ray there. says he'll he'll fight. Kurt, and that he'll beat him tonight, and he'll beat him at Mania. Yep. And Randy says he'll he'll watch. You know, every hotel room got the the Randy Orton chair. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> and he's like, "Now hold on a bit, player." Out of pocket. And he tells him to leave. He th- calls the CCW locker room, and yeah. they escort him out. There we go. And then we see Randy Orton aggressively manhandle his rental vehicle. He's like, ah, oh, come on, don't do yeah, he, that, ah, oh, come on. He's like he, yelling the whole way. He really peeled it out of here yeah. in his 2003 Ford Escape or whatever. Randy you gotta just love, uh, looking, looking so, so 2000s, you know, like just, boot, boot yeah, college dude. jeans. My, you know, uh, my wife says that he looks like the singer from the Scooby-Doo live action movie. And I said, Sugar Ray, and she goes, yes. <laughs> So, nice. Oh there yeah! You go. <laughs> All right, Sugar Ray was escorted out of the arena by yeah, Wonder, Head Long. Right. All around the world. The bald Randy Orton era. Not soon enough. Not 2012. Actually. Yeah, it takes a yeah. while. Well, yeah. he needs to get he needs to get caught. He needs to get wellness planned like three times before that happens. Randy just wants to fly, and so does Chris Benoit currently, because he's oh, flying yeah. with the demons in hell. No oh, oh. boy. Welcome to Whoa. the Grown Warrior Animal. <laughs> well, uh, wow. And then, <laughs> well, and then <laughs> that, uh, how did you guys feel about us and them getting plugged? This is apparently one of WrestleMania's theme songs. I thought it was oh, really Shine Down. Yeah. I didn't even catch that, to be honest. I, I was a I million miles all. away at that moment. Holy. Yeah. I was watching this at four in the morning, and then I fell asleep halfway through. They were blinded by the fucking. Joe really it watched this in the format it was intended to be. To be honest, <laughs> I, like my feelings on that are are absolutely mixed, and I have, I, you know, it's fucked up of them to overshadow Peter Gabriel in that way when he worked so hard on such a banger. Look, they will never be the big time, and they know it. That's why they will never a, be larger. Why, than there's life. a quote unquote second WrestleMania theme. Yeah, They'll never be the very... big time. They did say, like, this is big time, like, four times during this episode. Yeah. Big time still has respect. Peter yeah, this Gabriel is, this, deserves this is a, all of it, though. This is a, this is a go-home big time. This Where is are my Gabe heads at? Shine you're a Gabe head. or whatever. You're a Gabe head. Comment on this video. Gabers. Gabers. Make gotta, sure you send in your, your, your Gabe merch to our P.O. box, okay? So I got a very big detour. Very, very... Because I just got the information that I needed... So I was going through DoorDash the other day because uh, mm-hmm. I was hungry. My wife wants uh, Jimmy John's. No, she wants Jimmy John's. And I was going Sandwich. through. I was going through the fucking like list of food, and I saw there was a thing called the Slim Six. And so I'm gonna send it to my chat real quick so you guys can all take a look, and it'll be on screen mm-hmm. for y'all to look. <laughs> it's just bread and cheese. And so oh, I asked oh, people yeah. that worked at Jimmy John's, and apparently a lot of people order that all the time. And so I want to ask, why? if you were out there listening and you order a Slim Six, why do you order yeah, a fucking on, bread on, with on. cold cheese on it? Hold on. Can you get it toasted? Is there any no. Way they don't do toasted. That's what I fucking said. They don't do That's toasted. what I fucking said. And they don't toast shit at Jimmy John's. That's so, no, they don't. If, if they toasted this, I might understand. <laughs> bro, if you unwitch it. Price. Bro, if you hit the unwitch button on just it, you're give you just all cheese, eating, dude. You're just, just eating eat cheese slices, bro. Like it's fucking hold hold three up. in the morning. <laughs> hold on. Can I get the Slim Six with no provolone cheese? <laughs> I need a Slim Six. Unwitch. No, unwitch. Uh, no no problem. <laughs> Can I get a pickle spear with that too? <laughs> that would be seven dollars, dude. <laughs> Bro, I, I love two pieces five, of romaine lettuce. So, like, we have we have no provolone cheese on it, right? That makes it the slim five, right? So then you unwitch it. 
if <laughs> they gives you five slices of cheese no on no no with a pickle and you're paying seven dollars pete what if i get the unwitch with no cheese Oh god! <laughs> did, they just, did they just send me the fucking nothing? Ty, Tyler, you're, you're Ty, like Ty, your homework is to do that right now. Yeah, I can't see what happens. I, if you were ever gonna send me DoorDash, that's what I want. Slim <laughs> six oh! on which? All right, I got the cheese. Hold up, I got the answer real quick. I get they, they just get lettuce. That is it. That's crazy. Bro. <laughs> All right, Ty, we need you to order this. I Do can't. that, no lettuce. Do with, no lettuce, with a, too. With a, with, a, with a mayonnaise packet on the side. Oh, my God. $7. God, we, we are living in hell. We are living in hell, everybody. <laughs> Here we I, are reporting live from three... hell. Look, there's Chris Benoit coming out to fight Road Warrior. <laughs> yeah, he's coming out for his match. Road Warrior uh, Animal. He, he shows up. He shows up fucking dressed like a terrible Mad Max cosplay and ranting like a drunk man. It's completely incomprehensible. I sat there and I'm thinking like, yeah, this is this is me showing up to the family of fu- the family function seven drinks deep. I'm so ready <laughs> to go. I'm raring to go. And I, then I get in the ring and get absolutely owned. Yeah. Well, he came out to the ring with the mic. Uh, fucking nipples hard, piercing through the leather and chainmail oh, yeah. jacket, saying that he once again carried his uh, now deceased Dead. tag team partner, yeah. um, and that he was the the real star, and he's gonna show everybody why he's big time and should be in the big time, and that's actually a thing he says. It's just so it's yeah. so it's so belligerent. It's insane. Like, Chris Benoit during this entire promo looks really sad. Yeah. He just looks confused. More, more than well, I mean, he, he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't, doesn't like that somebody's talking about their dead friend. No, no, I think yeah. Chris is so far gone. He just kind of got pushed out to the ring, and this this drunken man is yelling at him, and he doesn't know who he is, so he just puts him in the crossface and kills him. But the ref's like, "Hey, stop yeah. it! Hey, stop it, dude! Hey!" I I'm led to believe. How long was this match? Like two and a half two minutes. minutes. About yeah, I something yeah, like that. Yeah, Road so, Warrior Animal might not have known. But he definitely was going to accelerate it if he connected, because he pulled out brass knuckles uh, after he gave Benoit. Uh, he was that so hard. Did an elbow. he know? <laughs> and he, he put them on, but thankfully Benoit's uh, instincts—he caught it German and put him in, put him in the arm bar, and then, gave yeah. him a gave him a cross face, and uh, get the win. But yeah. uh, how but yeah. uh, how good is Chris Benoit's whiff punishes? Because that was honestly crazy. Oh, dude. Chris Benoit is the most skilled wrestler of all time. <laughs> yeah, JBL and that's so all, and that's all I'm going to say at this moment. Road Warrior Animal Brass Knuckle Phoenix my, Punch is incredibly plus on block. My wife mm-hmm. also said, I, this might be in bad taste, but when does he kill his family? Yeah, hell and yeah. And I thought, good, I thought that good, would kill Naram if that was question. a live reaction. <laughs> Soon, brother. So we'll have to cover it. On the show. We will have to cover it. Uh, we already did, or did we? No, we didn't do it, guys. Don't listen. We we cut to the back, and we're we're greeted by JBL, and he he starts scoffing at Chris Benoit, and he goes, "Hey, Chris, I'm gonna take that belt off you like I took it off your best friend Eddie Guerrero, has he's dead and sh- dead as shit." And Chris actually looked mad. I don't think he knew that he... JBL was gonna say it. JBL JBL gave him a lot, I think, more credit. Still a shitty thing to say. JBL uh, meets uh, Chris Benoit out of Gorilla when Benoit's coming back after the match. And he says, hey, Chris, my hand's healed up. I'm going to take that uh, U.S. belt, just like I took another belt from one of the world's best technical wrestlers, your dead best friend, Eddie Guerrero, when I won the WWE Championship. He really, he really did talk him up there. You know, like yeah. that's probably the nicest way you can say that. He also said Chris Benoit was one of the best technical wrestlers, Chris but it won't matter because he's also going to take the belt from Benoit. And then Benoit hits him with, "I'm glad your hand is healed because you'll need it to tap." And everyone that said, "Wow, he's so good. Wow. He's so real for this." Yeah, he's so real. <laughs> Everybody claps. So real and for that. We all left the show, and that was the end of it. That was the end of the show. That was the end of the show. How do you guys feel about John Cena inducting the refrigerator into the Hall of Fame? That makes right. no sense to me, but okay. Um, I'm very excited to watch the Hall of Fame. I don't know. I don't know. John Cena was a Bears fan. <laughs> was, you know, they showed the clip of that man wrestling, and this is like the 
the schlubbiest, fattest, like, well, yeah, not wrestle fat wrestler I've ever seen. The man was 400 pounds, and he was yeah, a defensive no. tackle. He was the fridge, bro. He was the fridge. That he man was a just, straight dog. I man. would say he wasn't even a fridge, bro. He was the industrial fucking freezer from the back of your work when you worked at Arby's or some shit. Go look Whoa. up uh, a clip of him uh, running a touchdown. This man was fucking 400 pounds. I, I, I love big man people. touchdowns. Big man touchdowns are what bring me joy. If you got big, big man. man touchdowns, send them to our email. That's right. That's right. E- email is in the description down below. Yep. Like and comment your favorite big man touchdown. It is really yep. just Pete's uh, personal email that I stole from him. He doesn't know I know yep. it. Yeah. You know, I don't mind that. Send it to me. I'm willing to look at all the big man touchdowns, and I'll give you a review if we get any. Yeah, post a video reply to our YouTube video. Yep, and then we'll reply back. And but like we'll we'll record over your video and we'll do a live react. Do you guys well, remember when you could do that on YouTube? You can make like a video reply. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that was like, a real thing. There was that yeah, time. Was the there was that time where Joe and I were on the, on the Tekken saga of this one dude talking, this bald guy going crazy. It was, I love that guy. That guy was nuts. <laughs> he was so good. That was the craziest shit I've ever seen. I this remember. bald man was going absolutely insane on like a well-known Tekken like, uh, content creator. Just talking mad shit about the character he plays and then also getting into like why his character is so much better. And it was just deranged. Like This man probably hasn't left his house in years. He's so real for that. I remember Completely, it being 2 a.m. Like, and Joe goes, I need to show you single. this. <laughs> I need to show you this. And then I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, Joe, how long is it? He goes, oh, you know, it's like two hours. I'm like, two hours. Joe, it's 2 a.m. He goes, it's okay, dude. We're going to we're gonna watch it. And then I just keep hearing, Kazuya and Devil Jin are the same character. Here's the here's the strategies. And then he starts talking about, like, physics, uh, like just like physics and shit. Just like nothing to do with Tekken. He's like, well, just, look, look at the button presses. They're the same you know, input. If you know what we're talking about, you're obligated to reply now. And yeah. tell us your thoughts. Yeah, on hit the, the RE. I, I yeah. think that guy's an even like an evangelical now. Yeah, <laughs> good for him. Does he not play Tekken anymore? Because Jin is also a devil. I hope he still plays Tekken. That'd be so funny. That's too shit. <laughs> he plays the gay priest now. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Look up what this guy's name was, dude. <laughs> well, you looked that up. JBL is coming down to the ring. Dude. Uh. Comes down with Jillian, too. Don't forget, and her hammer hammers. <laughs> the what? <laughs> you know. Oh, fair enough. And so JBL's a match with some jobber. His name's Daniel Cross, dude. Come on. That's what I'm saying. And then uh, Taz says, apparently this guy has a zero and four um, streak going on here. And Taz says, you know, you gotta be careful because he's due for a victory, and Cole just. Like dies, he starts dying. This guy's a hometown hero. He's from Concordia, Missouri. When was his last match? When did he have his last match? End of in ring career, two thousand and eight. Bring him back. Oh. Welcome back to the Smack Up Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Pete just talked about Tekken for three hours. This is sorry. I'm, I'm at three hours and uh, five minutes on the recording. Yeah, me and Ty were watching Daniel Cross matches. Yeah, we we watched his whole discography and his filmography, and his uh his ring ring capabilities, and I think he's fine. He's good. It was funny though because Cole's hyping up JBL versus Benoit, and Taz is like, "We've well, got to JBL's got to get past the Cross here first And the Cross Cole's just like, Cole's just like, "Please stop." No, oh, hold on again. Oh, yeah, sorry, guys. Pause. <laughs> I hate man, you right now. <laughs> this man, this man, you, this is only gonna be in the podcast, but. This man is now making like, um, what I can only describe as being like AI generated content. Can you post it? Yeah, it's this one is how to end world hunger and homelessness, also spread prosperity and long life for everyone. Part one of ten. Part one of ten. What? Yeah. And then the current, the latest one is from five months ago, and it says how to make it rain in the desert. Oh, okay. Another one is how to live for hundreds of years. Oh. 
I like this, this video, the secret of why Pakistan players are so good at Tekken. <laughs> it's, it's, Pakistani players are the strongest Tekken players. How, so how to know. make it rain in the, de in the desert is a very, very politically correct way of saying how to drown Pakistan so they can't afford to play Tekken anymore. Guys, I got a Jimmy John's update. So I heard from the group that somebody ordered a double gargantuan <laughs> with double tuna one time. Wait, oh, you yeah. got tuna on it? Double tuna, double gargantuan. Wait, so what? Hold on, pause. You gotta ask for tuna. Pause for a moment. How do you get double tuna on this bad boy? I think you had to really fight for it. Can you get double cheese? Let me look up a gargantuan from Jimmy John real quick. What if you get a double cheese on it? The fuck is a gargantuan? What, is it the Slim 12? Well, the gargantuan is, the is, is like all meat. How do you put double on that and then double tuna? That's right. Oh my god. I could, get down, I could get down on a double gargantuan, but then I'd want to kill myself after. <laughs> also, I looked up Daniel Cross on Cage Match, okay. and he loses a match to Ace Steel uh, in May. Of 2006. No. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Be. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. This episode fucking sucks. But the SmackDown no, no, is good. Fine, fine. This is our greatest episode yet. We're <laughs> recording gold right here. Pete's looking up Tekken strats currently. Nah, this is not where he's listen. at. Listen, listen, listen. listen. We're listen. going back. <laughs> We're taking it back. Listen. We're taking it back in. JBL has Daniel Cross with him. <laughs> All right. All right. So, how did you guys feel about Miz harassing WWE employees? I liked him asking the last lady if, if she had uh, pornography on her work machine. Oh, she yeah. so she goes no, and he's like, I think you do. I think you do. As a as a little bonus, we need to watch. Do we need to do a live viewing of every episode of uh, the Real World that the Miz was on? Oh yeah, we got to catch up. Just yeah, so we, yeah. we get the lore. 8,000 8, 8, Patreons will do that. We gotta see yeah. why this, Chris Wall bullied this man. Did his debut connect? Like, was no, it like he's... a tie-in to the show? No. Oh, no, I mean... He was oh, just the no. guy that was on it. He was, oh, okay. he was on the real world prior to being... Uh, becoming a, a wrestler, basically. And Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, And then so... he gets kicked out of the locker room. He, get, he got bullied the fuck out of on... Uh, oh. The real world for being a wrestling fan, yeah. The mo AKA the most oppressed group of people in the world. That's right. Yeah, that's us. It's crazy. He goes from being oppressed for being a wrestling fan to becoming a wrestler and then getting oppressed by wrestlers that's for being right. a re for being a fucking reality TV guy <laughs> for a moment. And he's like, I always like to leave me alone. This guy the, Mi win. the Miz this knew, guy but that's a little win. bit of a spoiler. Did, did the Miz we, did know. Did we talk about the finish of the JBL match, or am I am I am I slow? Oh uh, no, we didn't. Him. We didn't talk about it. Here it is. Uh, JBL sets him up for a clothesline from hell. Yeah. Uh, but I guess he, I, he didn't like how Daniel Cross sold it, because um, it, it hit him. He hit him a little uh, low. Daniel Cross kind of fell a little early, so he sets him up for another one and absolutely knocks his head off. That was for real. He put some stink mm. on that, and uh, yeah, Daniel Cross picks who, up the dub. I'm kidding. Who, JBL. who is Daniel? Who is Daniel Cross? Just, he's a local just, jobber. He's, he's a local, local jobber from Missouri who oh, loses yeah. to Ace Steel in May of 2006. Oh yeah, dude. You know what the sucky thing is too is if he fucked that up for JBL, you know they went backstage and JBL fucking blasted him for real. He gave him the opposite of the rope, bro. Oh. He gave him the tug. Oh. He gave him the tug. Not the tug. A little, a little teaser. A little Daniel bit of a rough Cross tug. will return on a 2007 oh, no. episode of Heat. We'll see you in 12 so little, years. Little also, he's gonna go that. crazy. We'll see you in 12 years, Daniel Cross. Hope you <laughs> had a good life. Yeah. Uh, Booker T is here with his wife, and, and he's they, ready to fight a pirate. They are very scared going down to the ring because I don't know if it's because of Paul Birchall or the Boogeyman but they are scared. You no know, it's not because of Paul Birchall. They're definitely afraid of Paul Birchall bro they don't it's, know what he's it's, capable it's of. It's because of that eco-terrorist the Boogeyman. No dude. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that guy is single-handedly terraforming the environment with his It's his true. Worm, uh, yeah. His consistent worm produ uh, production. production. Yeah, yeah. 
I wonder how they got that many fucking And, and he's creating smog. No, nah, bro. He, he's afraid because he knows that Paul Birchall knows who the prisoner of Azkaban Dude. is, bro. Oh, I love Paul Birchall. This guy... Jerry Bruckheimer will not stand for that slander. <laughs> Paul Birchall's a brick bro, shit Paul house. Paul Birchall dude. has the fucking uh, has the dead man's chest, bro. He's got it. <laughs> it's true. His yeah. chest is fucking <laughs> massive. Paul Birchall was Assassin's Creed Four very early on. Oh, dude, he's he is so Black Flag. He has the Black Flag. He's descended from Blackbeard. No, oh, dude. Yeah. How can he not? Uh, so true and real. This match really doesn't go too too much into it. Like Birchall does like a move, and then Booker does like a, a move. Birchall hits a standing move. He, he got a standing move, so yeah. it was really cool. And then, and then just Boogeyman's music hits, and Booker goes ah, and then Booker just decides to say, "Wait here, my wife," and he runs around the ring and goes underneath the ring. Yeah, but well, they say that's, that's, where he came, that's where he came out of last. But yeah. but unfortunately, Bo- Boogeyman goes around the ring. You know, just get looking around. Just having fun. Who knows? We don't know what's under there. It could be like a whole other world down there, guys. There could be little people all all in there. Just just having all kinds of fun, you know. Is that Booker where the junior division went? <laughs> Booker T decided to live among the junior division for the rest of the show for some reason. <laughs> but he quickly comes back to reality after the boogeyman emerges from the side of under the ring where Charmel is standing, and he picks her up. Uh, and gets a little loose with it, I'd say. I'd yeah. say the grip is a little high. The grip is I, a little if, high. If I was Booker, I wouldn't let the boogeyman do that to my wife. I'm just saying. This is the second abduction of a woman that we've seen <laughs> on a SmackDown products, by the way. Oh, yeah. The check first out, one was Finley abducting uh Check out episode Crystal. 7. <laughs> You'll hear about Crystal being abducted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, when he, when he like took her, I was like, oh, no. Stole Booker's queen. That's crazy. That would never be me. If I, Booker, if I was Booker, I wouldn't stand for this. Um, for some reason, the match is still going. They didn't just throw it out, and Paul gets a win by a countout. Yeah, yeah they, they rang the bell. They rang the bell while the lights were red and the smoke was going. But uh, Tony Chimmel doesn't get on the mic until after the boogeyman is gone with Charmel, and then after Booker T has gone back to the backstage and then announces Paul Birchall as one via countout. He goes, that's, woohoo. And that's our pirate, bro. He steals victories, bro. Yeah. He doesn't Paul, win them the Paul honorable des- way. Paul deserves it a little better than that. Come no, on. no. He, he what, wins. What he's, a, he's a pirate, bro. He's plundering these victories, bro. All right, all right, all right. For real, for real. Yeah, and then the camera follows uh, Booker T backstage, and uh, he harasses some guy at catering uh, who points out that Charmel was taken uh, in that direction. <laughs> And then Booker T pushes open a door, and we'll see. We'll we'll, we'll check in with him later. That okay. takes us over to our favorite part of every SmackDown show: a mixed multi-man match. Oh, oh yeah! yeah! Oh yeah! I got... can slam a tornado. We got Matt Bang. Hardy and Bobby Lashley and Tatanka. And for some reason, I'm in Finley. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, just a natural, natural group of people. The natural born thrillers. Well, you know, Eminem just got a band, and then the Irish guy who likes to drink a lot. Eminem just loves to tag up with just a bunch of random people. They get Mark Henry. They get you know, uh, Jim and I. They love Jim and I. In my notes, I have Eminem come out. God bless Molina, and then David Finley's dad comes out. Hell yeah. Unfortunate. <laughs> I like Haley's comment on uh, Molina. Oh, that uh, she's just fake and plastic? <laughs> it's still real to me, damn it. Molina's <laughs> boobs are cool to me. I'm brave enough to say it. <laughs> Drop a hashtag on it. Add us on Twitter. Say hashtag cool boobs Molina. <laughs> real, real, real smack up bobbers or whatever. If I if I get a notification from our real smack up bobbers, no, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. I hope I had WWE Molina. Uh, here's this video and and likes it when we post the tweet in seven years. Yep. Hell yeah. Dude, you're not even gonna remember what episode this came from. Nope. Doesn't yeah, matter anymore. Pete doesn't even years. know where we're at. Buddy, I'm lost. I'm lost, bro. I'm in the shroud right now. I'm cooking up demons. 
I just can't wait for 10 years from now when I get a notification on my phone and it said Molina liked your video. <laughs> you know who you know who <laughs> cooked up demons? Whatever. You know who cooked up demons? The booker Katanka. of this. No, the booker of this because Matt Hardy got a victory on SmackDown. Yeah, yeah dude, this is the like demons. Matt Hardy's first fucking pinfall victory. Of the year. victory. Yeah, and he didn't get any help at that point. He he no. hit him with a twist of fate, and I was like waiting for someone to like no, it can't be like tag in or or do something. Funny, I'm like funny funny aside. I'm sitting here watching, and my girlfriend's just, like walks in, and I'm like, before you say anything, don't worry. He's actually Native American, and she looks at me yep. and she goes, she goes, she goes, is he? Yeah, is he like the Native American? Where we find out in like five years that he wasn't actually Native American. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's for real, for real. He, he, he fortunately, sorry, fortunately born, thank goodness Tatanka beats the case. But Tatanka defeats the case with ease, with ease, fortunately. But he didn't beat Finley doing an ass drop on his balls. Sadly, <laughs> he could, he could not defeat brother who could Finley with the ass drop on the balls. <laughs> <laughs> David Finley still came out. <laughs> David Finley's dad just dropped his booty on Tatanka's balls. What are you gonna do? It was pretty pretty epic. I got a I got a, a quick history lesson for y'all. So I'm looking at his uh, page and this is just a wild way to become a wrestler. He's like, you know what? I can't be an NFL player. I'm gonna do powerlifting. Like I'm gonna wrestler. do bodybuilding. <laughs> I'm gonna do no, but then hear me out. He goes, you know what? The NFL player strike happened. I'm gonna go become an accounting. <laughs> And then in a video store, he meets Nature Boy Buddy Rogers, <laughs> and they just they just this hit it off. Tatanka? Yeah, yeah. Are we talking about Tatanka or yeah, or Tatanka? Because I, hell yeah, good for him. That's tight. Yeah, I was then, gonna say if that's Finley, that's fucking hilarious that he became Finley, an accountant. Finley would not play for the NFL. He's too European to play for the NFL. That's true. That's true. But in my head, I just wanted to picture fin, uh, Finley as an accountant. I, I love this little bit because he, he calls up Larry Sharp, who runs the Monster Factory in southern New Jersey, and then he had his first match against a guy named Joe Thunder in 1990. <laughs> the Joe Thunder? The Joe Thunder. Holy. So, shout out I to I heard they're making an A24 movie about Joe Thunder. Be on the lookout. <laughs> wow! No way! No way! You got to be the yeah, way. You got to be. And then, the, and then the end credit scene is a, a little child, Chris Benoit, asking for an autograph. <laughs> Baby Benoit walking up. Kid, Kid Pegasus walks up. <laughs> Joe Thunder's last match was in 2009. Who did he fight? He fought. Let us see. His last match was against. The KPA. It was the KPA, Joe Thunder and Steve Camry. They defeat the Harbor City Hit Squad, which is Drolix and Kindred. Bro, what the fuck? No way. <laughs> that's, that's this is like... an MCW Legends of Maryland Wrestling 2009. If you're a Maryland wrestling fan, <laughs> write into our podcast and let us know about the full history <laughs> for what the fuck were those guys' names again, Nero? <laughs> Say them again one more time. Okay. The KPA, that's Joe Thunder and Steve uh-huh. Camry. All right, Joe, Joe Thunder and Steve Camry, like the vehicle. Yep. They defeated the Harbor City Hit Squad, which okay. is Drolix <laughs> and Kindred. Yeah, I hear Drolix, Drolix and Kindred, two of the yeah. biggest wrestlers in all of Maryland's history. Yep. All right, make sure you write in and let us know what you think. They're of still the wrestling. Drolix Kindred's Kindred. still wrestling. Uh, okay. All right. Well, what's he doing? What's he been up to lately? Um, Kindred defeats Doyle Day by DQ ACW. Uh, we have risen. ACW. This was what, it, what is ACW? That's not Maryland. No, this is in Delaware. Delaware. Since he's the been his home turf, bro. I don't know. Joe That's Thunder's getting up. getting fucked over. Oh, dude. ACW he's is Adrenaline Championship Wrestling. I need all my Thunderheads to come out and really give Joe Thunder some support. <laughs> I got another Kindred update for y'all. It was the 302 heavyweight champion. Dude. No way. The 302, they don't play around over there. Should I try this loaded bird wrestling. dog? Or am I, am I, should I try something else? What should I eat tonight, guys? I, I think you, need, up, you need a slim set. <laughs> we just talked about Joe Thunder for like 30 minutes. I can't talk about food. <laughs> Tyler, shut up, bro. Joe Thunder's wrestler, dude. Come on. All right. All right. Well, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Last thing before we get into this SmackDown again. SmackDown. No, no, Drolux had a dark match um, in MCW. 
And it was Black Wall Street. Chuck Lennox and Drolix defeat Jeff Gaines and Tony Macko. Tony Macko? Oh, yeah, dude. The District of Columbia's favorite son. Yeah, dude. The District of Columbia's favorite son. <laughs> Tyler, all right, all right. Tyler, 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 you want some tacos and burritos because the right. Mexicals are coming out. Right. Oh shit, Tyler, what are you? What are you? <laughs> no, they're not. Dinner? Not yet. We got Mark Henry, dude. <laughs> Tyler, what are, you, what are you getting for dinner, dude? I don't know, man. I was I, looking up a place called. I was looking up a place called it. Bird Dogs. I think that's just Buffalo Wild Wings, but they sell like hot dogs with fried chicken in them. Yeah, they do. Yep. That's crazy. Right, Bird Dogs is also a, a brand of pants slash shorts, but do not buy them unless they they back our podcast one day. Okay, you so guys. We'll, when we we'll start our wrestling fed, we got to get these guys to show up. Their <laughs> tag team name is called the Sigma Males. I think we can pay them enough to get out of MCW. No Dude, way. How old are they? <laughs> how, <laughs> how 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 many uh, fucking uh, back? Procedures as they're in charge. They're like recent. Right? They started wrestling in 2022. Yeah, but how old are they? That didn't answer my question. Um, let's see. Forty. That's going. Oh, but oh, Diamond Dallas Page started when he was when, 37. When Ty and I, when we all end up starting uh, inevitable um, wrestling federation among yeah. us, we Ty and I are going to dominate the tag team division as a tag team known as the Sneaky Athletics. Yeah, and, you know, like, you wouldn't expect me to do it, and Pete has no knees, so, like, you wouldn't yeah. expect him to jump. But he's going to be the jumping well, bombshell. You guys, you guys are cerebral, gritty grinders. Your name's going to be the jumping the bombshell. The, the cerebral, gritty grinders. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the Sigma Males versus Black Wall Street is a crazy... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? This this has to be some kind of like allegory or this feels reference up. of our time. Dude, is that, that's is Joe, that Thunder. Joe Thunder. Oh that's yeah, dude. Joe that's Thunder. Joe Thunder. I knew it. I knew Joe Thunder as soon as I saw his ass. When that man yeah. when that man meets you this in nineteen ninety <laughs> you become the star. He looks like that uh Joe that takes fat, you all back and makes Russian you a star, guy. bro. He looks that like that my... fat stupid Russian guy that does like food TikToks. You look at Joe Thunder, though, and then you look at his white queen. He did pretty okay, I would say. Yeah, yeah good bro. for him. He's he's uh, he's uh hitting way above his weight class, to be honest. Good for him. Yeah, that's all that matters. He stopped wrestling in 2006 or whatever. He don't care. He don't yeah. Care. So anyway, back to SmackDown. Okay. We should watch MCW. <laughs> I'm, I look, I, I support Black Wall Street. <laughs> I support Black Wall Street, too. <laughs> Guys, Mark Henry's so, here giving a eulogy to the Undertaker. Did did we even end the match? The last match <laughs> yes, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. Matt got the win. Matt got the win. Right. Yeah. There was. Do you want me to say anything else to the match? Oh, it was just. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're good. We're good. We're good. Hey, uh, hey, Pete. Yeah. Guess who won the match? Pete, guess. Franchise. It's oh. It was black. It was Black Wall Street. Oh God! <laughs> Mark Black Henry's here, Black and he Wall says, on the match. "Undertaker, Undertaker, I'm gonna break your win streak. Then let me go through everybody who you have lost to in your career." Jake Yo. the Snake. He he came Hold out. Up. He came out King with Kong a suit Bundy, on. Rick, we, and the, doing, the ring is doing decorated. Black preacher angle, dude. Black what? Whatever Pete doing said. Doing a black preacher angle on him. They are not doing a black preacher angle on They him. are doing a black preacher Henry, angle He's right just here. wearing a suit and giving a eulogy to the other. They, they put the black choir over him. Come on. You're going to hell for this one. <laughs> oh, man. You guys know 13 men have tried to defeat the dead man, and all of them failed? And one of them's Jimmy Snuka, who's dead and in hell? Wow. Yeah. Undertaker finally did something Two right. Two people mentioned on this episode I... of SmackDown that are dead and in hell. I Hell can't yeah. believe that they mentioned Giant Gonzalez because they've been trying to erase that dude from history for Why? years. Uh, because yeah, he was I tall. About this. I mean, you ever play 2K? Yeah. They don't mention him. They say, like, he beat all these guys except Giant Gonzalez. They just give it a, they give a blank. <laughs> I don't know shit about Giant Gonzalez. I'm not going to lie to you. He's a guy wearing a Yeti suit. Well, it was like 2006, so I guess back then they didn't care. Yeah, I don't know what, what changed. To where they're like, yeah, uh, actually, let's not talk about. It. I mean, that match was really, Triple, really bad. Don't look it Triple up. Triple H is just like, we're not going to put that one on their uh, 
Yeah, keep Don't talk about me. John Gonzalez. Uh, I hate that fat bastard. Uh. <laughs> he probably like snubbed him at catering when Triple H was still like a jobber. <laughs> when he Mark was terrorizing. Yeah, yeah, he was probably walking past and his plate hit uh, the fucking plate of ribs John Gonzalez had on his plate. Uh, fucking hit Triple H in his big nose. He probably had two he, racks, he, bro. He, he, he swore. John Gonzalez for sure had two racks. Yeah, he can knock him back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he... <laughs> <laughs> Who else did he beat? He beat Triple H. Uh, he beat two time Kane. That's what he said. He said two time Kane. He beat Kane twice, two times. Two time Kane. That's how he said two time Kane. That's Big our boss guy. man. The H. Ric Flair. A train. Two time Kane would never be a Republican. The f- Big Show and then Randy. Yeah, he's ever, even the Legend Killer. And that's... I can't believe he ribbed Kane twice. He's like, he beat I... Kane twice. Twice. He the, beat this man. The only thing about this promo that was bad is that it really didn't have a point because the like the aesthetic of it. Mark Henry in this big suit with the black wreaths with so the, the like like in the lights were toned down. It looked cool. It looked really cool, but he really didn't have anything to say but like let me list off everybody that he beat. He didn't really yeah, like, but, say anything new. He didn't. Well, it wasn't necessary. No. I guess Mark it fits Henry, the casket match. But Mark Henry's just repeated what he said like a month ago. Constantly, he says, that "I'm him, and yeah. I will beat the Undertaker." And it's like, okay, but it, that's what I'm saying, bro. He just did the same exact promo from like a month ago, just with the um the black preacher voiceover, which which is on the, like it just. It just feels bad because that was like a really cool bit that was kind of ruined. But they always got to just – Mark Henry's in a fucking suit. You don't see Mark Henry's suit. Down. And what they do is they arc him upward and zoom right into his fucking face. And he's Yeah, like, which oh. looks like weird on his in his big suit because it's like he's already big and his suit looks bigger than him. Yeah. We just keep rehashing the same things zoom over and over again. Zoom in very close to his face and he doesn't even have the good theme yet. No. So we just gotta, we gotta suffer. Three Six Mafia is nowhere to be seen. They're not even in the same area code right now. Um, so now, oh. Joe, are you ready to get a uh, Juan Deary? Yeah, uh, word DoorDash is telling me you just ordered fifty tacos, fifty five. Dude, how'd you know? Fifty five churro bites, dude. So yeah, Ty, because, Ty. because the Juan Deers came out. Ty, what's for dinner? Oh my god, I got bird dogs. Yeah, what's dude. for dinner? Yeah, bird dogs. I never had it. Yeah, get this guy. <laughs> A freaking. Let me get this guy a torta. Amali. Get this guy a torta. Get him a Mexican right. sandwich, bro. Before we get on to this next banger of a match with the Mexicals, SmackDown is brought to you by Ice Age The Meltdown. Hell yeah. HR Block. So true. And Nintendo DS. It's okay to touch. Yeah, okay Taz to says touch. touching is good. And after a long pause, Michael Cole just says. Yep. <laughs> He's so real. Taz also mentions the Juan Deers, and I lost my shit. He goes, what do you guys think Cole, about that? they're on the Juan Deers. Champion. Who? I love her. Who? Should be me. Look what I posted. Uh, the MCW champion. I'm glad we're still on this bit. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. <laughs> Nobody, forced you to read that. Nobody forced you to read that out loud, Tyler. What do you mean? <laughs> I clicked on it. I clicked on it, and you know, I respectfully looked. No, I was I just told. I was just told to go check, take a look at it. Fuck you, right, Ty. Nobody forced you to talk about it, though. You could have just clicked on it and said, "Hey, all right." Hey, Nobody's all right. Forcing you to look at it. Nobody's forcing you to talk about it. Respectfully oh, speaking. Respectfully Jake? speaking. That's a good yeah. champion, and I'm I'm happy. I'm happy she's yeah, champion. Yeah, J- Jamie Noble was was forcing the Juan Deers to feel him because yep. he kicked oh, them dude, on, the, on his way out. Like a freaking jerk, dude. Jamie Noble throwing. Jamie Noble feels no respect. Him throwing psychosis into the Juan Deere was so disrespectful and so I funny could, at the same time. I couldn't believe it. You know, if you were going to tell me anybody was racist and wanted to build a wall, Jamie Noble and Kid Cash, I'd believe it. How's so it feel true. like Kid Cash is finally back on TV? <laughs> Guy who we're... got stabbed in a trailer park wants to build a wall. News at 11. <laughs> <laughs> Where where were they on the sixth? Wait, Kid Cash or Jamie Noble? Jamie Noble in real life. Oh no. Where All were right. they? He's okay. He's okay now. Alright, listen here, fuckers. 
super crazy, hit a fucking Spanish fly off the top rope, mm-hmm. and Taz cried because he didn't know what the fuck that was. Oh, no. He's Taz like, don't know. Taz went, what did he just do? That was like a doll, like a spinning moonsault off the top rope. Whoa. whoa. Yeah. yeah, I guess, yeah, it was a spinning moonsault. It is he didn't know, he didn't know, he didn't know what it was. Also, Psychosis hit a really good top rope plancha. And I can't believe Michael was, yeah, he had a somersault plancha. I'm like, how did, did you, where did the fuck did you learn that, Michael Cole? Where have you Michael been? Michael Cole has to know, dude. He has to know. Yeah, because no, Taz, Taz literally made his career off of just knowing how to choke. That somebody. was that was a fun match. That was a really good match. Yeah, as, as I said, the Spanish fly gets the dub because, of course, right? Because, like, nowadays it wouldn't get the dub. But here, I mean, oh. what the fuck is that? Ty, Ty, you need to call your attention to the chat again. We have breaking I just That's what I'm yelling about. about oh, Noble. my. Jamie Noble looks good as a crossdresser. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. That's also not him. I'm going to kill y'all. No, this is the wor- like, oh, Again, no, this is the worst episode of Smack Up to date. No, this is the best episode, bro. What are you episode. talking about? That's shut- Jamie Noble's girlfriend, though, for real. Shut your mouth. Jamie Noble's... A uh, femboy girlfriend. Is she is, a femboy? Is, I don't know. I'm gonna, just going to lie and say yes. She <laughs> looks like she could be, but it, it feels kind of <laughs> fucked up for femboys, too. Yeah. You know? I'm arresting y'all on charges. Ne- <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> to if be you... determined. Watch the video. No, About... I did. Hey! Yeah. I did. All right. So Taz on commentary also made a note that uh, Gregory Helms broke his nose. And that, uh, and then Taz starts laughing at him, and he goes. And Taz is so upset about this. He's like, too. "Are you he's kidding like, me? He broken nose, he's and like, he's not he wrestling." Broke his nose. What a baby! <laughs> he broke his nose. He broke his oh, nose like a month ago. Yeah, and that's why his Taz nose has been like, swollen what? since No Way Out. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't been on since. I don't think. <clears throat> All burner. Um. We anyway, can... the match is over, and we're we're back with Booker T looking for Charmel. Oh, the Mexico's won, by the way. Yeah, they won. Yeah. Also, also, Taz says he's not impressed. What about uh, you know, Gregory Helms being gone, and he says, you know, as a champ, you got to be there to defend your championship. You know, like day in, day out. And Roman Reigns watched this episode, and when he got to that part, he said, "Turn that off." No, we're not talking about it. <laughs> I don't watch. So. When I was watching this, I was uh, I was eating lunch, and all the worms being on the floor as Booker's trying to find his wife, she just puts her food down and says, "I can't eat it no more." Oh, dude, it's like a horror movie shot too, but like uh, yeah. you're eating. I was like, gonna it, say he. Yeah, the yeah. camera's like all the way at like the bottom of the stairs, and Booker's at the top, and like as he's like walking down, he like steps on the worms, and you hear it go. That, like that all, like, edited like sounds. squishy noise was crazy. Yeah, for real though, this like was a pretty artistically inspired segment. I don't know what it really like, was. Like whoever was behind this one was was like putting in extra work for absolutely uh, no reason. But um, yeah, Booker T like finds his wife and she's like on a box surrounded by worms everywhere. <laughs> Boogie Man's and just then, chill uh... behind the corner going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> he's just laughing I, at him. He doesn't care. What would have made it better though? Like for a second, like they kind of focused like at, to the end of the hall, and I was like, "Are they gonna have like Boogeyman just like standing there menacingly?" Well, like, I, I didn't even because awesome. I didn't even see him because I I understood right as soon as Booker T entered entered the red light zone. This was this was the Boogeyman's domain. Expansion. You were in the booger zone, bro. Yeah, you were you were in the booger zone. There was worms. There was the red lights. The boogeyman sees all and feels all. The worms are his body. We're we're in a this is a real genjutsu type level move from the boogeyman right. here. Hell yeah. So Booker T's fucking SpongeBob squeaking across the worms. <laughs> and <laughs> thankfully <laughs> thankfully picks Charmel up off the milk crate and, and and they're able to escape. But only because the boogeyman let them. Very true. And in yeah, forty eight hours. In 48 hours, the Boogeyman will get his. The Boogeyman hit him with the six eyes, bro, and that was it. Yeah. What a, I... what a segment. Actually, that was like the one cool part about 
this it was well directed bro i know it was really well directed and this put feud has been dog shit and then just like oh let's just let's cook for the last fucking go home show this is the go no. home shows guys we have wrestlemania next in 47 yeah. hours michael cole keeps saying so well, much it's... larger than life big time, big time. i think did we, did we get any matches we didn't get any matches added to the card did we no, it, it, no. it's locked in they did announce that it was four hours of main event action. Oh, God, yeah. They said special start time, too. I yeah. can't wait till we all I'm get gonna, together this and watch the beginning this. of it, bro. I'm going to really? delete myself and Ty's home. So are we going to live record that? I yeah. don't think we have the technology to do it, but we're definitely going to record our podcast right after. How are we going to have the, the technology to record it right because after? Because it's just going to be loud as shit with the fucking TV being blasted and we're all Give yelling. Me, all we need is three mics. All we need. Okay, here's what we need. All right, I we're going to watch it at Ty's house like next Saturday. Yeah. After And watch the Hall of Fame too. We have to figure. No, we got to do the Hall of Fame first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then um, once it ends on the TV, we're just going to play big time on repeat. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're just gonna keep yelling about it, and then we're not gonna actually say anything. It's just, it's just gonna be us yelling. No, much larger than for like three life. hours. Big That's time. absolutely what we're all about. Cut this out, but not no, don't call, not, cut not cut during a Make playoff sure alliance. Not not during a lions playoff game. <laughs> we're not cutting well, that out. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> they need to know. They need to know. Go lions. Go lions. Isn't that, that kind stupid, of like? I will kill you. Isn't that kind of like almost docks us? Not really, though. No, they don't know anything about us. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. Because Ty cuts it all out. Yeah, don't cut that out either. Editor Ty, if you don't cut that out, what are you doing, Ty? I, I really so then that brings us magically to Kurt Angle versus Rey Mysterio, oh, the nine time yeah. match yeah. The Angle. only thing worth a damn. Editor Ty just edited out show. Pete. <laughs> what? Pete's not in the episode anymore. What? Oh, oh. no. Oh, no. Pete, uh, I'm so sorry you weren't uh, here for this episode. Oh, shit. Bye, Pete. So, yeah, Kurt Angle versus <laughs> Rey Mysterio. <laughs> he was so big time for this. Oh, hey, I think I edited Pete back in. We got Pete back. Editor Ty, you're so good at your job, dude. Editor Thanks, Ty. Man. Fucking knew it, dude. Editor Ty, this is why you're the big time. Big time. Or are you, dude? Oh. Hmm. Let's get into this match, because it's the main event, and it's actually a good main event, and actually a one-on-one match, and actually, wow, it's for the story. Because we got the multi-man tag match earlier. And if you believe it, it actually ends in, like, a clean victory. Oh, my God. Finally. Yeah, we (laughs) missed No, no, hold on. Hold on. Spoilers. What? Well, spoilers. Never mind. Okay. How many West Coast pops did we get in the match? The thing where he springboards off the ropes and then stuffs his balls in their face. Oh, dude. So he didn't do know. that. He didn't do that at this point. He did the gonna, Hurricane Rana still. I was going to let oh. Joe rot on that one because you guys have been doing that to me for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, what if I let you rot, bro? <laughs> Cleveland pizza. No, let's move forward. <laughs> Cleveland pizza? <laughs> Cleveland pizza was deserved. Fuck you. Yeah, you deserve that. I was asking a genuine question. Fuck you. Order me a Slim Six right now or else. All right. Fair enough. Let me order you Slim Six. On which? With no cheese. For $7. Bro, what if you unwitch your Slim Six? Hey. Kurt Angle gets Rey Mysterio in a headlock. And then Rey <laughs> reverses it to a drop toe hole and spins oh, back up. <laughs> Pops up and gives Angle a head scissors into the corner. And then we go to commercial. And then the, yeah, and then you the missed the part. You commercial. missed the part. You missed the part where he tries to do the 619, and then Kurt England gets up and says, Hey, man. No. Not, uh-uh. I'm not about that. You're not going to get me. And Ray that. Mysterio's like, Yeah, I almost had you. And he's like, and Kurt Angle's like, No, no, you didn't. Yeah, and then uh, Ray eventually gets got and uh he gets caught in the ankle lock and taps yep. in like two seconds and it makes ray look really bitch made yeah i was gonna say the only person that's allowed to lose clean is ray mysterio because he's just a little guy well hold on hold on hold on because randy orton runs into the ring and he hits ray mysterio with an rko uh-huh. and he's yeah, like that wasn't kurt. quite the end of the show yeah he's like kurt you see this 
This is what's going to happen to you. Wipe that smirk off your face. This is what's going to happen to you on Sunday. And then Kurt runs into the ring. And then uh, Randy tries to get the RKO on him. He reverses to <laughs> an angle slam. Goes for the angle lock. And uh, Randy also taps out in like two seconds. Kurt Angle yep. looking incredible right now. Top He's point. so natty. It's also so worth natty. mentioning that like as soon as Kurt had the match won against Ray. He let it go, but yeah. it, Randy tapped immediately because he's a little bitch. Yeah. But Kurt laid that shit on. And he he went into it. He he made it a, like a like a knee bar ankle yeah. lock too. He he, he, he went it. down to the mat with him. He wrapped it, put the figure four on. Yeah, he respects Ray. That's why. Yeah, he said he's like you're you're the more formidable opponent. So he just said he just you know wants to win, but he still right. likes Ray. Yeah, he still is homie. He's a respectable enemy, dude. Adversary. Tyler, what did you think? It was good. Good match. Would you say it was big time? I would say yeah. it's pretty big time. How much larger than life? How much larger than life? Big hey, what were you time. doing? What, what were you just doing just now? Pop? What do you mean? What do you mean? What were you just doing? Just I was now? watching that video of Jamie Noble's girlfriend What's it? on repeat. Yeah, Tyler, don't what, I mean, don't you, worry uh, about it, dude. <laughs> just don't worry about it. Need you to I'm trying to explain. get you the witch, dude. <laughs> if, if six slices of cheese show up at my house, I'm killing you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I got you something better than that. But, you got you buddy, an unwitch with lettuce? Buddy, I'm going to unwitch you. <laughs> <laughs> I almost got the fucking pistachio. <laughs> dude. Oh, my. <laughs> Good what? thing, good thing, Joe just said you're allergic. You're a freak. <laughs> Holy I, shit. I just, I, I just shut down the Cold War here before Ty sent you a fucking pistachio <laughs> <from bomb>. sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I was about to send me a nuke. Just a, a missile directed at my place. <laughs> and with that, you've been smacked up. <laughs> you've been smacked up. 